Welcome to TCMLL.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the front brake pads and rotors on this 1999 Ford Windstar. That's right. Now we're going to show you the tools we use to do this project. I have a jack, two jack stands, and two wall chocks. We have our new front brake pads and two new front brake rotors. We have our brake, our dot three brake fluid a brake parts cleaner, high temperature caliper grease, anti-seize lubricant, some thread lock, some hose pinch pliers, a large C-clamp, a disc brake spreader, a standard flathead screwdriver, a three-quarters socket and ratchet for the lug nuts, a 15 millimeter socket and ratchet for the caliper bracket bolts. A 12 millimeter socket and ratchet for the caliper guide pin bolts. A 11 millimeter wrench for the bleeder screw. A 3 8 drive torque wrench. A half inch drive torque wrench. A bungee cord to tie the caliper up with. A brake bleeder kit some safety glasses, a shop lot, some shop towels, and a rubber mallet. Now the first thing we do is set the emergency brake. Then we put our wheel chocks behind both rear tires. Then we'll use our screwdriver to remove this cap over the lug nuts. As you can see, it has an access hole to pry with the screwdriver. Put the screwdriver in and pry. Be careful not to break it. Then we're going to break our lug nuts loose, turning each one a quarter to a half a turn. Move to the other side and do the exact same thing. Then we're going to jack the vehicle up. Always refer to your owner's manual for proper jacking positions. Here we found a plate in front of the engine. Then we're going to put our jack stands into place. Never work on a vehicle that's only supported by a jack. Always use jack stands. Pull the vehicle onto the jack stands. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the lug nuts. Once all the lug nuts are removed, we'll remove the tire and wheel, put the lug nuts on it, and we'll slide it under the vehicle for safety and for convenience. Move to the other side, remove all the lug nuts again. Again, slide the tire off and put it under the vehicle. Now we're going to turn. Since you work on the passenger side, we're going to turn the wheels to the, to the passenger side. Here's the location of the bleeder screw. Here's the location of the caliper guide pin bolts. Here's the location of the caliper mounting bracket bolts. Then we'll use our hose pinch pliers and pinch the brake line. Remove our dust cover off our bleeder screw. Install our 11 millimeter wrench. Install our bleeder kit, open up the bleeder screw, using our large C-clamp, we'll compress the piston. This allows us to easily remove the caliper. Now we tighten the bleeder screw, remove the bleeder kit, remove our wrench, reinstall our dust cover, Then we're going to remove our caliper guide pin bolts. Then 
with both bolts removed, we'll slide our caliper off and tie it up using our bungee cord. Then we're going to remove our old brake pads. And here you can see the groove that's worn into them need to be replaced. And here's the matching groove into the rotor. Remove the hardware from the mounting bracket. Then we're going to remove our caliper mounting bracket bolts. With both bolts removed, we can remove our caliper mounting bracket out of the way. Now you notice on this rotor, there are no retaining screws. Yours may have retaining screws, but this, these didn't. This was probably replaced at some other time. You'll notice our new rotor has places for the retaining screws. But the, when this was replaced last time, the retaining screws were lost. And so we don't have them to reinstall on this, on this vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and put the new rotor on, hold it in place with a lug nut. And clean the surface using our brake parts cleaner and a clean rag. Do this on both sides. Then we're going to prepare our caliper mounting bracket, remove our caliper guide pins, clean off the old grease with a rag, and we'll lubricate them with some anti-seize lubricant. Slide them back into place, make sure the, the rubber grommet fits correctly. Then we're going to apply some thread lock to the caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide the caliper mounting bracket back into place. Line up our bolts. Tighten them up by hand as far as we can. Then we're going to torque the caliper mounting bracket bolts to 85 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Now we bought some new hardware for our brake pads. Make sure you install the new hardware correctly. Once our clips are in place, we're going to go ahead and apply some anti-seize lubricant on the area where the pads slide, so they'll slide freely. If you get any lubricant on the rotors, make sure you clean it off. And then we're going to slide our new pads into place. Once both pads are in place, we're going to coat the back of the pads with some high temperature caliper grease and smooth it out with our fingers. And then we're going to untie our caliper and get ready to compress the pistons. We're going to move our, remove our dust cover. Using our, install our 11 millimeter box in wrench, install our brake bleeder kit, open the bleeder screw. 
using one of the old brake pads. We're going to use our disc brake spreader to compress the pistons. Since this has two pistons, we're going to move it from one piston to the other so we can compress them evenly. Keep going back and forth until the pistons are flush within the caliper. Once they're flush, we'll remove our this right spreader, remove our old pad. Tighten up the bleeder screw, remove our brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, reinstall our dust cover. And we'll slot our caliper into position. Make sure you turn the guide pins correctly. Get the caliper on. Now we're going to apply a little thread lock to the caliper guide pin bolts. Then we're going to torque them to 25 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Once we're done this, we're going to move our hose pinch pliers, move to the other side, turn our wheels to the driver's side, to get access to the back of the caliper, reinstall our hose pinch pliers, remove our dust cover, install our 11 millimeter box in wrench, install our bleeder kit, Open up the bleeder screw. Using our large C-clamp, we'll compress the pistons within the caliper. Tighten up the bleeder screw, remove the brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, and reinstall our dust cover. Then we're going to remove our caliper guide pin bolts. Remove our caliper and tie it up with our bungee cord. Remove our brake pads. Remove our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Those removed, remove our copper mounting bracket, remove our rotor, reinstall our new rotor, hold it into place using one of the lug nuts. Clean the new rotor with our brake parts cleaner and a clean rag on the front and the back. Now we're going to apply some anti-seize lubricant to the caliper guide pins. 
Lubricating the guide pans helps the pads to wear evenly. Apply some thread lock to the caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide the caliper mounting bracket back into place. Insert the bolts. I'm going to torque these to 85 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. We're going to install a new hardware. We had to buy this hardware separate from the brake pads. Snap the new hardware into place. And we're going to lubricate the hardware with our anti-seize lubricant to have the brake pads slide just a little bit easier. Remember, if you get any lubricant on the rotor, to wipe it off. Then we're going to install our brake pads. We're going to apply some high temperature caliper grease to the back of both pads. Remove our caliper from the bungee cord and we're going to get ready to compress the pistons. We may move the dust cover, install our wrench, install our bleeder kit, open up the bleeder screw, using one of the old brake pads and our disc brake spreader, compress the pistons inside the caliper remembering to alternate between the pistons to compress them evenly once the pistons are compressed remove the disc brake spreader, remove the old pad, tighten the bleeder screw remove the brake bleeder kit, remove the wrench, reinstall the dust cover and slide the caliper into place. Apply some thread lock to the caliper guide pin bolts. Insert the bolts. I'm going to torque the bolts to 25 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Move our hose pinch pliers and get ready to bleed the brakes. We open up the hood, we check the brake fluid, add as necessary to get to the maximum line. Starting on the passenger side, because it's farthest from the master cylinder, we turn it, the wheels to the passenger side to get access to the bleeder screw. Remove the dust cover, install our wrench, install our brake bleeder kit. Have your partner depress the brake pedal and hold it. Open, open up the bleeder screw and watch the fluid come in through the line and look for air bubbles. Tighten up the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal, 
and mash it again. Remember to never release the brake pedal with the bleeder screw open as this will introduce air into the brake lines. Keep doing this process until there's no more air bubbles in the brake line. Then remove the bleeder kit, remove the wrench, reinstall the dust cover. Again, add fluids necessary to get up to the maximum line. Move to the driver's side. Turn the wheels to the driver's side. Remove the dust cover. Install your wrench. Install the bleeder kit. Again, have your partner depress the brake pedal and hold it down. Open. Open up the bleeder screw and look for air bubbles in the line. Tighten up the bleeder screw. Have your partner release the brake pedal. Mash it down again. Open up the bleeder screw and keep doing this process until there's no more air bubbles in the brake fluid. Once you're done, remove the bleeder kit, remove your wrench, reinstall the dust cover. Again, add more brake fluid if needed. Straighten up the wheels. Remove the lug nut. And install your tires and wheels. Snug down your lug nuts. So they're going to do the best you can. Move to the other side. Do the exact same thing. Again, snuggle down as best you can. Using our jack, we'll raise the vehicle back up. Remove our jack stands. Lower the vehicle back onto the ground. And we're going to torque the lug nuts between 83 and 113 foot pounds, torquing in a crisscross pattern. Move to the other side and do the exact same thing. We reinstall our center caps. Use our rubber mallet to knock it into place gently. Remove our wheel chocks behind both rear tires and we're done. Well, we hope this video will help you change the brake pads and rotors on your 1999 Ford Windstar. Send any comments you may have to comments at teachmeall.com. And as always, thank you for visiting teachmeall.com and have a great day.